Adam Repos Vox here, and I'm just playing around with Adobe Rush, and you might see that all of my cores are being utilized in the background here, but I'm not rendering. What's going on? Well, we've asked and we've now received. If you go to Preferences in Adobe Premiere Rush CC, you can now pre-render sequences for playback, which means in the background, when you're not doing anything, it's actually rendering these sequences to a proprietary format, I, I honestly don't know what Adobe would be using. I can poke around in the program files to see if I can find these transcoded sequences, but it's basically rendering the sequence in the background so that when you hit play, it runs a lot smoother. Now, at the moment, it's not doing so. It's still a little bit choppy, but it's still rendering in the background. But it's actually doing it. This is a very popular feature of Final Cut Pro and DaVinci Resolve, and it has been much requested. You just saw that clip reset in the background. That means it is now using the optimized version. The quality still isn't that great. I wonder what happens if I change the preview quality to high. I do wonder if that will reset what it rendered. Yeah, the scaling for the playback always looks a little weird. But it is rendering these in the background, which I think is pretty cool. Unfortunately, however, it doesn't really give you a, like, it gives you a clear cache button but it doesn't give you a setting for the actual cache location. And I have found the location of the cache file. I was having a lot going on this morning, so shout out to... where to go? Ah, uh, Fabsnet <laughs> for recommending using Resource Monitor, which should have been obvious, but whatever. You can see here, System. Writing is happening as it renders the cache folder it's in your Creative Clouds Files uh, folder, which is ridiculous because it's going to be using up all of your free Creative Cloud space to render these previews. But you can see here, it is rendering MP4 proxies, which, by the way, MP4, that means it's H.264. Actually, if I pull up media info here. Yeah, it's using AVC codec as a proxy file, which is not even all that easier to render or like playback in the first place. So it's just rendering uh, lower resolution versions of these uh, at 30 frames per second instead of the 1440p60 and the 4K30 versions that it was <laughs> starting with. It's using AVC codec proxies in just lower resolution, which they're only hoping that it's easier to edit based on it being lower resolution in the first place, not and easier to use codec. Not gonna lie, I'm pretty disappointed here. This is not how you implement this feature. Now I did wanna point out, if we go to new project, we'll call this test, you can uncheck sync with Creative Cloud. So I'm gonna do that real quick, and then we're gonna come over here to edit two active projects. We're gonna import this file, and I'm gonna see where, where's the file? Hello, I have a video in here. No, it's, alphabetized. All right, we're going to import that one, and we're going to see what starts writing here. I did want to note that up here in the menus, you have sequence prepare for playback. That seems to trigger the sequence rendering and put it into like a foreground process to fully take over your CPU here. My recording is actually going to be very low frame rate for a moment while this is happening because it is running full tilt on my CPU. Uh, that seems to trigger it, and I was having trouble actually tracking where the previews were going because it wasn't showing up any more files. So, <laughs> this just gets even weirder. So if you have Creative Cloud Sync enabled for your sequence, it goes to your Creative Pl Cloud folder. If you don't, it seems to be going to your Documents folder, and it's a completely different file container. I'm just baffled at the moment. So Documents, Adobe, uh, Premiere Rush, Managed Media, you have video previews. I mean, this this is this is probably the equivalent of render into out like I do in uh, Premiere Pro. But then if you do that, then it renders previews as an MPEG file. Now it may convert this or something once it's done. It's clearly running full tilt. But, geez. Okay, it seems to have calmed down a bit. But yes, it has rendered all of these previews to MPEGs in the documents folder. Again, 1080p, this time it maintained 60 FPS. 
It's a little confusing because the source file is a 4K 30 FPS file. So I guess it automatically changed sequence settings based on that 1080p 60 FPS file. But the source file I was working with was 4K 30. <laughs> oh, this is just weird. All right, well, that's some more information for you. I do not like the way this is going. I was originally going to praise it for this video. I've actually unlisted that video so I could add this to it. I'm not a fan. Bam. By the way, in terms of actually supporting VFR clips, if you're adding gameplay clips with like weird volume, you need to make sure that you turn off auto volume because otherwise it screws up all the volume of clips. Uh, but as far as actual playback goes... I don't even have my... Okay, I can do this. It seems to play back fine. And if I use something like this Call of Duty set, set up for... An example, if I can find like me shooting at some point. All of that seems to be in sync. It is now rendering playback of, or rendering a cache version of this file, the new one that I added. And I closed all the cache locations, because I'm a genius. Alright, so it is rendering some sort of cache into these folders. But unlike the video preview rendering of Adobe Premiere Pro, I don't think it's rendering actual dedicated video files for it. It is using this for peak files, for audio though. Yeah, so this is weird. I can't really explain what it's doing. I will try to get more information and get you back in a future video, but as far as I can tell, it handles variable frame rate just fine, and you now have background rendering to make playback easier. I don't think it will affect rendering speed quite as much as, say, DaVinci Resolve or Final Cut, but it does at least help with playback, which will be useful since this is probably going to be more useful for people using lower-end computers, things like that. Hope you found this video helpful, if not a little confusing, I guess. Sorry for my cat running in the background. Hit the like button if you enjoy. If you enjoyed, subscribe for more tech education. I'll see you next time.